You know, I, I don't think that they were as sharp as they could have been in the compulsories, but they really came through where, in the optional rounds where it counted, and I think that's going to be enough to get them the silver medal. Look at that reaction from Melissa Sitsquini. Well, you, her first Olympic Games, she said earlier in the week, when you believe in yourself and you know you can do those things, no one can stop you. Welcome to the RBC Spotlight Space. My name is Anastasia Busis. I am joined by Canada's most decorated diver, four-time Olympian, two-time Olympic medalist, Jen Abel. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks to you. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have the performance that I wanted to have in the individual. But after hearing you saying all my title, then I feel much better now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pump your tires. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how, I mean, we just saw that wonderful montage, but as you said, competed in the individual springboard today. Um, how did you feel going into the competition and to the finals today? So I felt great. Um, I mean, I think the hardest part, part was where I had to wait in my room and then probably start overthinking and not being able to control what I wanted to do because I had to wait. Mm -hmm. um, but when I, I had a super great uh, practice before uh, finals, and unfortunately, I missed my third dive uh, during the finals. So it completely put me out of the middle, uh, podium. A week ago, though, you won a silver. Yeah. We were watching the montage <laughs> go, I can't believe that was a week ago. It feels like yesterday. Yes. Um, with your partner, of course, Melissa Citrini Bilyeu. Mm -hmm. What is so special about that partnership? Melissa, she's she's just a like shining, super major big star. Um, she's amazing. She's the type of athlete or person where she always sees the positive out of the negative situation, and she's passionate about diving. And I feel like after Rio. I kind of lost that passion that I had um, because I came, unfortunately, two times for it in a week. Mm -hmm. um, so after I, I, I got to dive with her and she was she she never did any world championship or World Cup and or all the big major games. So she was just really passionate and she was so happy to be beside me that it kind of brought me back where I started, where I was super enjoying everything. And I mean, I think that's one, she's one of the reasons why uh, the flame came back in my, in my heart for the, the love of my sport. Did she just make it a little bit more fun? Obviously she made it more fun. Like we are pretty much the same as a, a person, like we understand each other. And I feel like we had a great chemistry and a great friendship. And that's the reason why being by her side uh, at the Olympic was just completely almost easy. How special was it for you to put the medal around her neck and vice versa? It was actually better than having someone else to put it That's on ourselves. That's what herself. I thought. Yes. Everyone was like, oh, is that a downer? I'm like, I no, don't think so. Not at all. And I feel like it's like telling us that that's our place and that's our medal and that's all the effort that we put for the past five years and here's your Olympic medal. And, I'll, and also, like, it wasn't easy for us because since 2017, um, we got the silver at every big games, uh, not big games, but like the World Championship or World Cup. So coming here, knowing that, like, we had everything to lose, but we were capable of putting 
everything aside and just be on the present moment and do this together. It was just fantastic. So being able to put the medal around her neck and her putting the medal around my neck, it was just a fantastic moment. Everyone has had a little bit of a bumpy road to Tokyo. Mm -hmm. What are you most proud of in your journey with Melissa to get here today? Um, Melissa and I, we are drastic thinker um, mm -hmm. and we are also drastic athlete we love to know that we did everything and as athlete we often like oh maybe i should have do like an extra 10 minute bikes or maybe i should have done this better or maybe i shouldn't enjoy this a little bit more mm -hmm. or have a rest but this time when we were we were standing on the board we both knew that we had nothing to doubt about her preparation and we were ready for it and this is something that i was really proud because there's a few athletes that are capable of saying that, that they are standing at the Olympics knowing that they, they've done everything. And I, after Rio, I told myself that when I'm going to stand on the board in Tokyo, I knew exactly where I was going to be mentally and physically. And this is how I was during this week. Congratulations. That's a wonderful you. thought. You have been to four Olympics, <laughs> 2008. Yeah. What have you learned about yourself? 2008, 2012, 2016, 2020. Um, every Olympics are different. Yeah. And people don't realize that it's every four years. So just in terms of mental stage, every, four years, it's a lot, even though it goes super fast. But when I was 16 and after 21 and then after 25 and now, um, I'm not the same woman anymore. And when I look at myself when I was 16 and now, um, if I can, like, let's say, see myself right here, I can say, you know what, you did like a really good job. And I know I was hard on you, but good job. <laughs> yeah. People feel as though they've almost watched you grow up. Mm -hmm. What would you like to say to everyone back home that supported you through thick and thin? Thank you for the support. Thank you for reminding me how a great woman I was, I became. Uh, how sometimes people are saying that I'm wonderful. So thank you because <laughs> I can be really rough or every athletes are pretty rough with themselves, especially when things are not going their ways. And with the pandemic, I think it was really tough for us um, and for the whole world. But I mean, us athletes, we are pretty uh, um, rough on, on ourselves and not knowing if the Olympics were going to take part and not knowing what's going to happen next. And then I was still being able to focus on the uh, present moment and pushing myself hard and hard. So being here today, competed at the, the Olympics in Tokyo with the pandemic, um, I'm really proud of where I am today. And I, I can say, wow, I was part of those games. <laughs> you should be proud. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, Canada's most decorated diver. Appreciate you, Jen. It was a historic day in the pool. Penny Alexiak won her seventh Olympic medal, making her the most decorated Canadian Olympian of all time. She surpassed uh, Clara Hughes and Cindy Clausen, of course, my old teammates. Mm -hmm. And uh, producer Soph has made a beautiful montage of every single one of those medals. So Soph, please roll the tape. Chantel Van Landingham says, Alexiak is a great closer. Canada has not won a medal in this event in 40 years. The Australians will win gold. Alexiak trying to hold on for the world champion and she did it. Alexiak is two from the top. Lane number two. Alexiak going for the medal.
She's here, RBC Olympian Penny Alexiak. How are you doing, my friend? I am doing great. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, you made history this morning. When you woke up, what did you tell yourself? Uh, honestly, I kind of just like woke up and I wasn't really nervous today or anything. And That's nice. I don't know. I just knew that I had three really, really strong girls behind me in that race. So I was kind of just like, I'm going to have fun today. I'm going to enjoy it. And if I get that seventh medal, I get it. If not, I don't get it. That's just the way it goes. Usually when you're having fun, you perform your best. Exactly. That was kind of in the back of my mind a little bit. I Absolutely. was like, if I have fun with it, then I'm going to do well. So in turn, I'll get a medal. But then I was like, you also don't need the medal, you know? Yeah. I was like convincing <laughs> myself. The, le the less you want it, the more it comes. Mm -hmm. Um in your mix zone, if you had such a lovely mix zone interview and you said, I'm happier that I won it with my teammates. Expand upon that, please. Uh, I just am such a team oriented person and I love seeing other people succeed yeah. at things, especially people that are close to me. And um, I train with these girls every single day and I have for the last like two years and even before that, some of them and everything. So, and like, some of the girls I've known since I was like nine years old. So yeah. it's just like really cool to be able to be on a Canadian team with those girls and represent Canada and um, just get up and be able to get medals for Canada and do it together. I love that because I don't know, it's more fun to stand on the podium with three other people than it is just by yourself. Yeah, I was an individual athlete, so I wouldn't know. Yeah. Uh, I didn't also stand on many podiums. <laughs> Um, no. What is so special about our swimmers, though? I mean, you say Team Canada, it's special. It, 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 we've said pool party for a week. <laughs> what are you doing that is so special right now? Uh, I don't know. I think after Rio, I think there was kind of that big boost of confidence in swimming in Canada. And I think um, bringing more girls into the center and really just bringing us all together to train together with one goal really helped a lot because we all knew that we could achieve things on relays and in turn we were able to achieve things on our own. And I think just knowing that we have such a strong team and we now have guys that are coming up and it's mm -hmm. just really exciting to see how Canadian swimming is really coming to the forefront of like sports in Canada, which I love clearly I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Can you actually give a little bit of a shout out to some of your, your male teammates? Because again, I mean, the women have stole the yes. show, but as you said, Paris is three years away and the men are coming up. Yeah, definitely. I honestly have been giving shout outs to them, but like <laughs> Josh Leendo, Finley Knox, like Yuri Kissel, all these guys have been uh, training with us and they've been doing so well. And I mean, you saw that when they did their four by yeah. one, they came forth by like pretty much like nothing. They were doing so well. So I'm really excited to see where they're going to be at in 24 because they're all like really young still. And our whole team is really young. <laughs> Yeah, it's a very young team. Um, let's go there. What predictions? What I mean, I'm guessing you have big plans for Paris. I, I think I do have big plans, but I've kind of been saying throughout this whole week, I'm like, I can't tell you what's going to happen because no. <laughs> then you, well, you're not going to tune in. So I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen, but big things are coming. Oh, shh. <laughs> um, I can only imagine that you've gotten 10,000 messages, but what are some of the cool congratulatory messages that you've received? Someone asked me that, actually. They're like, have you received any cool messages? And I was like, have I? I was like, did I miss something? I don't know. I haven't. I've been, like, kind of scrolling through my messages and everything like that and going through Twitter and stuff and just kind of mindlessly scrolling through everything and just seeing all the support that I've been getting, which is so amazing. But um, I don't know. For me, the cool ones are just, like, my friends and my family that are at home and my parents are sending me photos of the dogs and oh. <laughs> my like friends, I have like friends in Greece right now who are watching and they're sending me messages and they're waking up at like two in the morning to watch me race and everything. And um, friends in Toronto that are like setting alarms and everything like that. So for me, those are the like best ones. Cause I don't know. I just miss my friends and my family so much. So I can't wait to like get home and see them. What's the first thing you're going to do? at home see my friends and my family is that someone going to be throwing a, a socially distanced covid party i don't know i don't think so i think uh all my friends are pretty like covid safe like it's yeah i they don't really like to see me honestly it's kind of mean <laughs> but um 
No, uh, I'm probably just going to see my parents and my dogs. I'm really excited to see them. <laughs> are your parents taking care of the dogs right now? Yes, they oh, are at our cottage. Gosh. Yeah, I creeped your Instagram a little bit. They're cute. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we actually caught up, though, with Cindy Clausen, who, um, of course, was tied with Clara Hughes mm -hmm. with six medals. And if you look just over your shoulder, yes. she had a little, uh, little congratulatory message for you. Cindy, I'm going to give you the mic. Um, what would you like to say to Penny Alexiak? I just want to say a big congratulations to you, Penny, just for holding the record for six Olympic medals. And I just want to just encourage you and tell you that I'm rooting for you for your next race. I hope you just do blow everybody out of the water um, with your team. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm just so excited. You've done so well. Um, you've made all Canadians proud. And um, I'm just so excited to see you, you race again. Oh, that's so sweet. She's a sweet woman. I know. I love that. <laughs> uh, and she was a hero to me, of course. She birthed a lot of Olympic dreams. Uh, who birthed your Olympic dream? Uh, I don't know, honestly. I'd say my mom and my dad, oh, I guess. Nice. That's weird. I don't know. It's like corny to say, but it's not corny. I don't know. Um, I just like remember in 2012, I think it was, like my mom bringing me downstairs and like, telling me to stop my homework to come and watch the Olympics and watching the men's like butterfly events and being like, you have to swim like them, not like the girls, you have to swim like the boys. And I was <laughs> like, okay, like whatever. And I don't know, my parents were just so good with me and they really like kind of dropped everything for me to be able to pursue swimming at a higher level. And if that was like driving me to school and picking me up and driving me back to school and then pick me up and take me back to practice and everything. Um, they would kind of do everything. And even on days where I wasn't really motivated to go to training, they would really just push me to go get it done. And in the end, it all would pay off. And it did. And I appreciate them so much for that, for just like pushing me when I didn't really think I could do things and they knew I could. So I really appreciate and love them for that. <laughs> Big shout out to all the parents. <sighs> we got to meet you as a 16 year old kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Aside from aging five years, as we all have, um, what's the biggest difference between how you approached Rio and how you approached Tokyo? Um, I think I approached Rio more with like a mindset of I didn't really know what I was doing. I was kind of just there for fun and I wasn't really expecting to get any medals. So I think after a lot of my races, I was like, I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. And, you know, for me, it was kind of like, wow, I got these by luck, by chance. And I think then five years later, kind of going into this Olympics, I think I had more of a confidence in myself and a confidence in my training. So I kind of just came in knowing what I was doing, knowing what I was here to do and how to carry myself at the pool and kind of trying to like teach almost the other swimmers mm -hmm. who it was like their first time. And I don't know, I think a few people kind of came up to me and they were like, you seem more like confident in yourself and happier with what you're doing and just overall very good. And I was just like, thank you. I appreciate that. That's kind of what I was coming Going here with the it. intentions yeah. of doing. So I don't know. I, I'm happy I executed it. <laughs> uh, what are some of the lessons that you learned, you know, from Rio to Tokyo that you've tried to teach some of your teammates? Uh, I think it's a lot of kind of small things. I think with my teammates, I kind of try and, teach them more of like how to carry yourself in the water and just like how to feel good in the water in races and how to kind of calm your nerves before races. But um, I think for me personally, I just learned to have more of a confidence in my training and learn to love training a little bit more because before I was like always race, race, race all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think in the last two years, we've had like maybe four racing opportunities, yeah. if that. So I've had to really learn to fall in love with training and find a confidence in that and coming into this Olympics, it was really nice to like have that confidence in my training instead of just assuming it was all luck. <laughs> what helped you fall in love with training? I, I didn't like training. I I'm going to admit, I didn't, I didn't like training. I know. I used to absolutely hate it. Like mm -hmm. every second of it, I was like, I just would rather, <laughs> I'd rather be, be racing, racing yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, but I kind of just had to when COVID hit. Um, we had four months out of the water and I remember coming back and my coach was like, he, I mean, after 
we had all our training and stuff, he was just like, I was not sure that you were going to be able to make it through that training block because normally I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. But he was really impressed with me in the sense that I was able to keep my head down and really just get really good training done throughout that time. And I just kind of loved like focusing on like the technical things and trying to get faster in every practice and doing sets week after week after week and trying to get better at them. Um, and even now that's like very, like, I love that and I want to get back into it again. And I'm just excited to get back into it again. I hope you take a little vacation. Oh, no, I am. Yeah, I definitely no, I am. have to swim to no. I give you permission. I'm not your coach. <laughs> Thank <but>. you. <laughs> um, it has been a bumpy road, though, to Tokyo 2020. Uh, you have hinted that you were struggling with a back injury. You guys were out of the pool. What are you most proud of? Uh, honestly, a lot of things. I think in the last five years, I was hit with a lot yeah. more than I could even have expected. And yeah stuff that I wasn't ready to kind of deal with, especially I think being like a 16 year old kid, you're just figuring your life out as a teenager. And you're still feel, figuring yeah. it out. I'm 32. No, a hundred percent. But like, you know, when you're like 16, you're still figuring out like who your friends are and like what your friend group kind of is. And I don't know where you fit in, what you want to do and everything. And for me, it was like when I was 16 and I got everything kind of thrown at me, it was like, everyone wanted to be my friend just because of who I was. And it was like, I was being pulled in so many different directions all the time. And I didn't know what was right. And I would look at different people to tell me what was right. And everyone would have a different opinion. So I think it was kind of confusing for me for a while where I didn't really know what I was doing with anything. And it was frustrating for me because like, I'm also trying to mature and become more independent. And I couldn't because I just didn't know what, what, I, what I was doing. And so, um, I don't know, then dealing with so many other random things like uh, my back injury in the last like two years, I was dealing with that pretty intensely. And I don't think anyone really knew about that at all. Like I would have days where I couldn't like walk because <laughs> my back was in so much pain and like weeks where I had to take time off training. I like got an injection in my back that was supposed to help and then it made it like worse. And it just got really messy really quick. And then I had to really take a step back and assess it, figure out how to take care of it. And I had the best team to help me look after it, both at the center and outside of the center. So then dealing with that and then trying to get back into training. And there was like a really long period that was like pretty close up to Tokyo where like I wouldn't be able to do kick sets because my back would hurt or I wouldn't be able to do dives for a really long time. And I think to come into this meet and have pretty strong dives and kicks and turns, I'm really happy with that. <laughs> what are you going to take from, you know, you had mentioned a little bit of a bumpy past, not just in COVID, but after Rio and the pressure that was put on you. What are you going to take from the lessons learned there going forward out of Tokyo? Uh, I think now I'm just way more sure of myself, weirdly, like I'm 21, but like, now I'm very, very sure of who I am and who the people I have around me are. And I don't really care to kind of expand out of that as much as like, I think it can be tempting. I think I'm just happy with where I am in my life and with my family and my friends and the people I have around me. And I really trust the people that I work with. So I'm just want to go back to my life as it is, I guess. I don't know. I'm not expecting it to be anything crazy, but for all I know, I could touch down in Toronto and everything could be totally normal or I could touch down in Toronto and everything could be very wild and crazy. And I'm honestly prepared for both. How lovely is it that your two dogs don't care about medals? I love that. I mean, I don't know. I think Norman might. Oh, Norman. He's, like, he's very particular that boy oh, so boy. he might be like hello where is your gold medal like, <laughs> um i'm gonna give you the mic one more time i would love for you just to this i mean this is your oscar speech thank you like. uh, okay yeah this is my oscar speech yeah thank you for this oscar um i don't know i want to thank my family my parents my brothers my sisters my niece my nephew um my grandparents for like watching and supporting me through everything and 
really just keeping me on such a good path in the last five years and helping me make decisions that were really hard for me to make. Um, I want to thank everyone who has supported me and watched me. And even when I'm not doing great, you just stand behind me and you really make me feel loved and supported and keep me motivated with swimming instead of beating me down when I'm not doing well and um, just lifting me and helping me kind of motivate myself to move forward. I want to thank my coaches, my support staff, um, my management team, honestly, they're really amazing. Like they're people that um, they're not just my management team. They like really actually help me with real life things that I deal with. And they're the first people I go to with anything that really happens in my life. So I appreciate them so much. And I really want to thank the people that sponsor me, such as RBC. You guys are amazing. And I don't think I could be here like genuinely and have been able to just focus and stay head down in training and get to compete at such a high level without you guys supporting me and helping me like pursue my dreams, my passions. So thank you to everyone. And if I missed you, I'm sorry, but I hope everyone knows that I like really actually do appreciate it. <laughs> thank you, Penny. You look happy. I know that's what people have said. You thank you. Happy. That's like the best. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, you look really happy and congratulations. You've made history. And uh, my opinion doesn't matter. But no, it's, what the heck? No, but it's, I mean, Clara and Cindy were my teammates and, mm -hmm. you know, I've spoken to them and they just said there's no one better that could that could uh, mm, I'm gonna further cry. that record. I'm not crying. I've made everyone cry, so don't worry about do it. it. It's horrible. It's horrible. I'm going to let you go because I think you have 5 million uh, other interviews, but I just appreciate no. you so much taking the time. Thank you so much. You're wonderful. Sophie, I'm going to put, quickly put on my mask so you can uh, leave the studio. And I think you've got to run. I think you've got another live hit, my dear. Well, I will see Look you on this. that live show. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Penny. Congratulations again. Soph's notes, everyone's favorite segment. Sophie, let's go. I think that there's a big race coming up, so we gotta we gotta make this. Sound. Everything's happening. Uh, yes, there is a big race. We gotta wrap this up quickly because sorry. Yeah, see, everything's happening at once. Uh, we do have to wrap it up quickly because I'll tell you, the men's hundred meter final is coming up in like twenty minutes, yeah. and we may have Canada's first male medalist of the Tokyo Olympics. Andre de Grasse came second in his semifinal heat earlier today. So it's it's uh, shaping up to be a great Sunday morning in Canada, Sunday night here. Those are the coolest sunglasses I've ever seen. I just have to say that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, let's wrap it up because there's a big final and nothing better than racing. Uh, this is what we have to look forward to in the next 24 hours. Lots coming up. RBC Olympians, Melissa Humana Paredes and her partner, Sarah Pavin. Again, round of 16, they are on fire on the beach. Alana Bray Lougheed is set to compete in kayak doubles, the 500 meter heats. And Allison Beveridge, RBC Olympian, is set to do big things in the team pursuit in track cycling alongside uh, her so many amazing teammates from Rio. They, of course, won a bronze in Rio and hoping to upgrade that medal. That is our show. You just saw the most winning Canadian Olympian of all time, RBC Olympian, Penny Alexiak. She looks happy and that makes me happier than any medal. See you tomorrow.